Speaker, uh, tomorrow uh, we will be voting on a 950-page-plus bill that no one has read. Uh, this is a bill, the Farm Bill, uh, which uh, was first made available to us uh, late, late last, uh, last evening. Uh, and uh, to make matters even worse, Mr. Speaker, uh, we're told that um, we will only have one hour of debate on this bill. And we're not even going to have a, a rule on the bill. We're going to have a, a rule that incorporates the Farm Bill with an abortion bill. What they have to do with one or another, I have no idea. But it is clear what is going on here, and that is that the leadership is, of this House does not want anyone to know what's in that bill. And one of the things that is in that bill, which I find reprehensible, is an $8.6 billion cut in the SNAP program. The SNAP program exists to make sure the people in this country do not go hungry. On November 1st, last November 1st, a cut of $11 billion went into effect. The recovery monies ran out. Congress did not renew them. So everybody on SNAP, all 47 million people, received a cut. Food prices didn't go down. You know, they, the economy hasn't gotten much better. Uh, but their food benefit went down. And their benefit is, on average, about $1.40 a meal per day. So those who think that this is some sort of generous ben benefit have no idea what they're talking about. And so we cut their benefit. Um, and, you know, and they are now ending up going, uh, spending more time at food banks and food pantries looking for ways to put food on their table so that their kids don't go hungry. And we bring a farm bill to the floor that cuts that program by another $8.6 billion. Now, supporters of the uh, farm bill say, well, really, it could have been a lot worse. You should just be happy it's $8.6 billion. You know, this is, you should declare victory. Well, those people who are going to be adversely impacted by that $8.6 billion cut, I don't feel, don't feel a lot of victory. Yeah, yes, it is targeted. It is targeted to those individuals who are on this so-called heat and eat program. These are poor people, you know, who get a little bump up uh, in their benefit to put food on the table, mostly elderly people, mostly disabled people. So we're going to go tell them that they're going to get significantly less a month in, in a food benefit, but, you know, the good news for them is uh, th th there'll be some that won't be adversely impacted. They should take some satisfaction in that. Let me, let, you know, so we talk about numbers all the time. We talk about statistics, statistics. Let me read to you a couple of real life examples. William, an elderly man from Salem, Massachusetts, currently receives $181 a month in SNAP. He lives in senior housing where heat and utilities are included, but the rent exceeds 35% of his 802 month supplemental social security income. His SNAP benefit of $181 a month is based on the heat need option. He incurs other health-related expenses not covered by Medicaid, but which he has had significant difficulty producing the detailed verification required by the state. His current SNAP would be significantly reduced by more than $80 a month if he lost this heat and eat option. Pamela, a severely disabled woman from Northboro, Massachusetts, currently receives $115 a month in SNAP benefits. She gets $1,007 in monthly Social Security disability benefits. In addition to other medical conditions, she's a diabetic and requires a special diet to meet her daily nutritional needs. While she lives in public housing, she must pay for her own appliances and maintenance fees, including her air conditioning unit essential to her health. She does not have a car, but uses her limited income for private transportation to medical appointments, grocery shopping, and pharmacy trips, as she is not near any public transportation. With the loss of the heat and eat SNAP option, her SNAP benefit will, will be reduced by $100 a month. So from $115 uh, to the minimum of $15 a month, significantly impacting her ability to maintain her special diet. Let me say to my colleagues here, the cut that went into effect last November uh, will cost the average family of three about $30 a month in benefits. Those who will be impacted by the cuts in this heat and eat program will lose an additional $80 to $90 a month. So their reduction in their monthly benefit for food could be between $120 and $130 a month. Where, where are they going to find the food? Who's going to make up the difference? You know, my colleagues uh, say, well, uh, the Republicans say, well, they could go beg for, to the states. The states ought to do more. 
You know, or if the states say, no, go to the churches or the synagogues or the mosques, maybe they'll do more. The bottom line is, if my, any of my colleagues took the time to go back to their districts and visit their food banks, they would realize they're at capacity. Food banks can't give out anymore. So I would urge my colleagues, vote against this farm bill. Do not make hunger worse in America. I yield back my time.